my uh, heart this last few weeks has been this concept of reaction versus response. How many here has ever reacted? How many here has ever had them take that little hammer and react you? Every, uh, we, we learned, what's the rule? Every uh, action has an equal and opposite reaction. How many here has equal, opposite, and above and beyond? I can react to that and give you 100% more. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's amazing how quickly that can snowball. I think we're seeing snowballs all over our nation today of people reacting. And I want to talk about response today. I guarantee you it's not hard to react. How many here has had some bad things happen in your life and you've reacted to them? You felt that was a proportionate response to the situation. <laughs> you felt completely justified. You had every excuse of why it was okay for you to act that way. That reaction was fine, God. I mean, do you, you don't know what I've been through. God's like, you don't know what I've been through. But anyway, um, you don't want me to react. <clears throat> yeah. Thank, thank you, God, for some self-control. <laughs> Saves a life. Response or reaction? Uh, I want to focus on responding with the Spirit of God today. And I thought we would start at the beginning in Genesis chapter 3. So are you ready for a long haul? Ready. Just kidding. We'll get there. Don't worry. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. And you, we all know this story. So I just want to pull some tidbits out today. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. It's like page 5, so it should be easy to find. <laughs> the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? <laughs> Where you have what have you been doing? I left you alone for one day. It's just the afternoon. What are you doing? Where are you? And so he called, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because, well, you know, I've been doing stuff you told me not to do. So my reaction was, I'm going to hide because that, that'll work. How many, looking back on your reaction, go, that was stupid. That was, that there was no cognitive thought in that at all. Yeah. So I hid from the almighty creator of the heavens and the earth because, <clears throat> you know, I thought that would work. Uh, and he said, you, you told you, uh, he said, I, well, I was naked. I found out some things that you didn't tell me. And so I'm, respond, I'm reacting to this new situation I just found out. And so he was hiding. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Oh, I know what happened. H have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Did you do the one thing I told you not to do? I had one job. One job. <sighs> then the man said, oh, God, I am so sorry. I really messed up. It was all my fault. Yeah, that never happens. Yeah, no, he had another reaction. First he hid. Adam's going, this is a banner day for him. First he hid from God, then he blamed the woman God made him. This, I mean, he's digging a hole so deep, he's never going to get out. So then the, wo the woman tagged right along, fouled her husband in this whole thing, and, and the woman said, uh, uh, well... She gave me the fruit, you know, and then she said, but it wasn't my fault, God. That snaky thing, it tricked me. I gave you one job. And instead of doing the one thing I told you not to, that's the one thing you did. And then when I talked to you about it, it was everybody else. How many has ever talked to someone and the struggles that they're having in life 
is never their fault. How many here has ever talked to one of your children and goes, but she did, but he did, right? How do we react when God comes in the room? Oh my. They had quite a reaction. And, and God dealt with their reaction. He had a response. He cursed the devil. He lost his legs. Hey, the woman, things got a little more difficult. They had to work for sweat and all toil. Instead of the... What would have happened had they responded instead of letting their reaction be what they told God? I mean, what would have happened had Adam stood up, been a man, and said, God, I was wrong, I made a mistake, I did the opposite of what you told me to do? What would the world look like if he had repented instead of blame his wife? What, what would the future of all lady kind have looked like had she not blamed the devil for tricking her and been honest about, you know what? I wanted the fruit and he talked me into it and I thought, shoot, why not? What, what would life look like in our lives if we responded the right way instead of reacting? Right. In Joshua, there were some more stories I want to grab a hold of. Joshua chapter 2. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 2. We've got to keep moving. So we don't get left behind. Joshua chapter 2, verse 9, uh, starting with one here. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out uh, two men from uh, Acacia Grove to spy, secretly saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and they came to the house of a harlot named Rahab, and they lodged there. So they were on a mission to go spy out the land. Now, people found out... Um, there's some people staying at your place and we would like you to, we want them, right? Verse 8, now before they lay down, uh, Rahab came up to the roof and she said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Hear her response, but also hear the response of everyone else. I know God has given you the land that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. I mean, how did word get there that fast? The last I heard, everybody else that was there was permanently underwater diving. And the spies just got to the land, so did they, like, post it on Facebook? Hey, look what happened. You know, I, I, how did they already know? Right. Word got out. Mm -hmm. I know what God did. It wasn't, oh, look, these people walk through the... No, we know what your God did to yeah. the sea. For when you came out of Egypt and when you did to the kings of the Amorites and who were on the other side of the Jordan, and I mean, you utterly destroyed them. We heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. People need to hear what God has done. People, people need to know that he's real and that he is moving and they need to hear what God has done. For that to take place, we have to be about what he's doing. And we have to... Uh, what would have happened had God told Moses part the sea. And his reaction was, 
okay, splash, 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 splash. If he had tried to do it in the flesh. See, the reaction is the best we can come up with the flesh. But he responded with obedience. And when he responded with obedience, what is he going to do with a little stick in a sea? What are we facing in our life today that our reaction really isn't going to do anything to it? We, it, we think it's justified, but it's really not going to change anything. What if we responded with the instruction of God? What if we responded with the, 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 the Spirit of God and all of a sudden our obedience allowed God to cause a sea to part? What if our response allowed God to get involved? So in this moment, the people's response. Rahab had a different response than everyone else. She pleaded, spare me. I know, we know it's coming. Do you understand? Out of all of those in that city, now when I watched the Hanna-Barbera video, <laughs> how do you learn your Bible? I know, I learned it at like four, watching the same Hanna-Barbera movies on VHS. Uh, it, they still work. I pulled them out, and my children goes, what's that? I'm like, this is a movie. It's a movie? How do you use it? Well, you put it in this box, and it eats it. How do you fast forward through the credit stuff? How do you get, we can't skip it, Dad. How, yeah. No, you got to wait. And when you're all done, you got to rewind it all the way to the beginning. You can go get a lunch and you can come back and it'll still be rewinded. So anyway, what I learned was the only thing left standing was her house. Now, however we want to say that, God spared her because of her repentance, because of her response. See, everyone else wanted to kill those guys, but instead she had a different response. She, she, she knew what was coming. If we understand what's coming and instead of reacting to what's happening around us, if we responded, what would happen? Would, would we find ourselves spared in the day of destruction? There's a lot of destruction happening right now. How do we react or respond to the destruction that is around us? Evil is nothing new. I mean, this is not something that is like just got invented. Evil has been around. Darkness has been around for a long time. And how we respond to it is going to determine God's involvement in our life. I want God involved in whatever is happening around me. I want to be able to be a light in it and to watch him work in my life and change the situation that there would be nothing I could do to fix it. There's another story I want to touch on here. Run all the way to Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And this is talking about Zacharias, not Zacchaeus. Don't be confused. There's different ones. Zacharias, he was a a priest, and he was doing his job. He was working in the temple. And so it was his turn to work. And so he went to the temple to do his work. And so, verse 9, here we go. Uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 9. According to the custom of the priesthood, is it was his lot fell to burn incense. And when he went into the temple of the Lord, the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Surprise, God showed up at church, you know. Sometimes that catches people off guard. But then the angel said to him, do not, uh, oh, then Zacharias saw him and he was troubled and fear came upon him. What, what is our response, what is our reaction when God shows up? 
when the message of God is delivered to us, what's our initial thought? But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. What is our reaction when God begins answering our prayers? <laughs> and, and your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. And for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. What will the next generation, the promise of God, the, the answer to prayer, what will they be? They'll be filled with the Spirit of God. How long did it take us to find out the Spirit of God? How, how long did it take us to get rid of the spirit of reaction, the, the attitude of this, before we could really truly respond the way God intended? He needed someone that would have His Spirit in the earth to prepare the way for what God was doing. So he will be great and, and then he will go before and he'll be, have the power like Elijah and he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He, he's going to do some things and man, he's going to prepare the people. I'm losing my place but I'm just telling you the story. You can read it later. <laughs> and Zacharias said to the angel, well, how shall I know this? Because I don't believe what you're saying, so... That's, that's not how I thought my prayer was going to be answered. That didn't fit inside of my answer block. And so... I mean, let me tell you we, I know we've been praying, God, and I know you're answering my prayer, but let me tell you how that's not going to work. I'm old. And my wife is well advanced in years. She's not old. She's just advanced. I don't want to get, you know, he's, 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 he's got a little wisdom, you know. He's not blabbing his wife's age around, but, you know, so. And the angel answered and said to him, I'm Gabriel. I didn't ask you any of this other nonsense. I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and to bring you these glad tidings. I would, probably would have added shut up. But he had been in the presence of God, and so he, he probably had to work on his response to dumb questions, right? Yeah. That's why he's Gabriel, and I'm not. So, yeah. But behold, you will be... But let me tell you while this is going to go. This is so much a better way than to say shut up. Watch this. Watch this. But behold, you will be mute. This isn't... This isn't, I recommend you stop talking. Guess what? You don't get to talk. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week, not until the promise is fulfilled. I really need you to go do what I said. But I can't have you say anything. Because if you say anything, this isn't going to happen. Because if you start telling your wife what you believe, you're going to mess up the whole plan. Yeah. And God has a plan for this child, and I need you to do your part. Yeah. Meaning it was not immaculate conception, okay? Do I, have, I don't want to have to spell it out for you. You, <laughs> you figure it out on your own, watch the Learning Channel. I don't know. <sighs> so anyway... But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. What is God promising to us? What is God's instruction to us? Do we react with, but God, that's not going to happen. You're going to pour out your spirit and flow through us? How could you use me, God? I... You'd be amazed what God could do. 
And so Zacharias had to go and do what God instructed him to do. What, what would happen if our response was just doing what God instructed us to do? God would accomplish his plan and purpose. Bad words, our, our reaction can cancel out. Our negative can cancel out all the positive that God's trying to do. And, and just as it's easy to react, it's easy for negative to snowball and to seemingly seem so much larger. You want to talk positive, and it's like, you have to, like, with all that is within you, try to say something positive. But before you know it, you could, you could blab all the negative without even breaking a sweat. But it's work to stand against that. It, it takes a decision, a choice to bring light into darkness. But once light is in darkness, darkness has to flee. Hence the resistance that comes from darkness. It's all about trying to stop us from turning the light on. Because once it's on, he's lost. Amen. In Acts, we recently talked about the moment where the, the disciples and those were in one accord and they were in the upper room. And I just want to touch a little bit here on this story and, and the response. It's even labeled the response in the little subcategorized heading of the paragraph. The crowd's response. Verse 5, Acts chapter 2 and verse 5, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men. Now, our dear friend Andrea brought this out in her post on the blog, and then I prayed about it. So I'm sorry I stole your nugget, but it's in the Bible, so, you know. <laughs> That's what happens when, when God says something to you. People are going to be like, well, that's good. I wish I thought of it. I'll use that. So anyway, <laughs> devout men, right? We have a lot of people who go to church, say they're a Christian, uh, do good things, desire to be good, right? Devout. They're, they, they're faithful, right? This is their response. There were devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the sound of uh, people who were devout, instead of reacting to the Spirit of God, begin responding to the Spirit of God, a different sound was created. And so, when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. When the Spirit of God comes upon us, people are going to go, how did you know how to talk to me? That, you understand, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to speak Russian, okay? I'm not trying to speak French or another language. What I want is that when someone, and I'm in front of someone, I want to be able to tell them what God is saying to them about things I have no idea. Yeah. How did... How did you know only God must, God must have told you that? Because I've told no one that. I want them to know God is real. And if it makes them a little bit confused, how did you know? That's okay, because all I'm delivering is good news. You can be saved. You can have a different response than what has produced what's being produced in your life. So they were amazed and they looked at, aren't these all Galileans? Why? How do they know? How do they know? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? These devout people had traveled and they, they came to this place and it, God knows where they came from. He knows all of that. And so God began to speak through willing vessels. And there's a whole list of names that I'll, I'll, I'll say wrong. Okay, so we're going to skip there. You can read those. <laughs> and so they were amazed, verse 12, and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? 
others mocking, saying, oh, they're just full of new wine. It, do you, some people are going to react and they're going to dismiss God. Yeah. They're going to dismiss it and, and, and explain it away because they're not ready to repent. They're not ready to be changed. Right, yeah. But others are going to say, but it's, uh, do you know what time it is? It's not, that's not what it is. That I, I hear, I understand what you think, but that's not the truth. This, uh, then Peter got up and he began to clarify some things. This is what the prophet Joel talked about, what happened. What is our, what do we do when we run into fear? What do we do when we have a situation do we react or do we respond? If we begin to respond in all of these different situations, there's going to be a different sound that's made. Okay. And people are going to begin to hear it. Yeah. And they're going to say, you, you didn't normally act that way before. I know you before. I knew you B.C., before the anointing of God, before what is this that now has changed you? Who, who, what happened? Tell me what happened. I want what happened to you to happen to me. Now, I, I want to be able to respond the way you responded. Because if I reacted the way I want to react to this situation, we all know where that's going to go. Right back to where we started. These people begin to hear a different sound. Just our natural response, but beyond that, I, I desire to step in and, and say, God, what do you need to tell someone? What message of life and hope does someone need to hear today? And this is what continued on in Acts chapter 10. Cornelius was a certain man in Caesarea, and in, uh, he was a centurion of the Italian regiment. I mean, he, he worked in the job market there. <laughs> he was a soldier. And so God told him, go, and I have a message for you. And so he sent, sent someone, go, go find this guy, Peter, who's staying with Simon the Tanner. Now, Unbeknownst to Peter, who's staying at the Tanner's house, God got talking to him. Yeah. Now, sometimes when God talks to us, he tries to make it very clear, and we complicate it. Right. We get confused about what he's talking about, and he was intended it to be a very simple illustration right here. And so this is Peter's vision. The next day, Peter went out... Uh, um, so Peter went up onto the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he, how many, when, if you want to, if you want to go to sleep or get hungry, all you got to do is pray, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You can laugh in church. So he became very hungry and he wanted to eat. But while they made lunch, he, he fell and he began to see this vision. And he saw heaven opened up and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descended to him and let down to the earth. And there were all kinds of four-footed animals on the earth, wild beasts and creeping things and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter's like, uh, I don't think so. That's not what we do. That's not how we do things around here. Um... I'm pretty sure God's instruction was don't eat any of that. Mm -hmm. right. So God got his attention, right. okay. okay, with the information that he knew, All right. okay? Yeah. God got his attention. He was trying to open up his perspective, open up his mind, and he had to work with what Peter knew, okay? Yeah. So it was either fishing or he had, he had learned about some of these, you know, these are, this is what you do and you don't do. God had to work with what he knew. Yeah. Okay? He knew Peter. He was pretty, you know. Peter, Peter would jump out of a boat for you, you know, um, without a life jacket. So he knew he could probably get Peter to move forward. Okay? And so Peter, 
I said, uh, Lord, is this a test? I'm not the most studious person here, but are you giving me a test to see whether or not I was paying attention? Because I think I was. I don't know for sure. I got distracted a couple times there. <clears throat> and the voice spoke to him again the second time saying, what God has cleansed you must not call common. Okay, here we go. Yes, I get to change lunch all this time. And this was done three times, and the object was taken up into the heavens. Now, while Peter was pondering what just took place, uh, and what vision he had seen, there came a knock on the door. Do you understand God has a purpose when he speaks to us? And that purpose, he, he took what Peter knew, where he was at, what, where he was from, it, and he's like, okay, Peter, I'm going to use you. That's what I got to work with. So um, I'm going to use you, and I'm going to bring salvation to this person. Now, if I had not prepared you, guess what would happen? You wouldn't have given the gospel to him. So he knocks on the door, and all of a sudden, Peter goes, um, you know, they come, and what, why are you here, and all this stuff. I don't want to go through the whole thing here. Uh, but uh, Peter... Here in verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and said in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. He began to understand what God was really saying. He, he began to say, oh, it's not about the animals, it's about the humans. Oh, I get it now. God, God wants to save everyone. Kind of because the people he chose have been turds, but you know, okay. So he's like, you know, we're going to open this up, you know, because the people I picked, they don't even appreciate it. So we're going to go and we're going to find someone else who will appreciate this. And so they came. And you understand, this is our moment. This is our opportunity to say, God said, you know what? I, I choose you. I choose you. And you know what they did? They responded to this. They didn't know why they were coming. And they didn't know what message they were going to get. They were just obedient. What do we do when God says, I need you to go hear the truth? Do we react and say, well, they don't like us. They'll not. That. No. They came. They went. They were obedient. And guess what? The, the most beautiful part of the gospel was demonstrated and, and spoke in that moment. Our opportunity to be part of the kingdom of God. God said, I, I, I got a plan for you. So what's our response, right? How do we respond when fear comes? How do we respond when sickness or pain comes in our life? How do we respond to our children? How do we respond to the lost, to the hurting? How do we respond to those that we think we already know what their reaction is going to be? Uh, I, I don't want to say I'm a thinker, or I think a lot. But I, I seem to want to play out scenarios how I think they're going to go before they happen. How many ever done that? Oh, you want to go witness. Well, I know how they're going to respond. It's probably not going to do anything, so why bother? Yeah. Yeah. My reaction completely justified myself and allowed me to stay exactly where I was and not do anything. Yeah, that's right. And I felt good about that. How many has ever felt good about not doing what God said? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That, uh, that reaction, how, do we respond to God's instruction? I talked a little bit ago uh, on a prayer call about uh, I, I want everyone to experience the what if it works moment. Yeah. What if being obedient to God works? Yeah. See, the devil always says, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if you pray for somebody and nothing happens? But what if it does? Yeah. Come on. 
it's never going to happen if you never do anything. And see, we get caught in this reaction of, well, see, nothing happened last time. Well, I mean, did you forget you didn't do anything? Were you, were you there? Were you there? I, that's, that's why nothing happened is because you didn't do anything. How many has had that argument with yourself? But you know, and you justify it, and you explain it away. And we, have a lot of re we have a lot of ways of responding to what God's instruction is. Not all of them work. I want every one of us to experience a responding to God and having a moment of what if it works. If we have our what if it works, well, what, if, what if I respond to fear with, with standing up and, and, and beginning to speak his words? What, what if it changed the situation? I, I guarantee you our thoughts will be quick to say, well, see, nothing happened. Do you understand that's the devil scared to death that you're going to find out the truth? You understand that's his tactic. He's going to cause us to, to, to downplay what God is doing. He's going to bring up every time we messed up. He's going to bring up every time it seems like nothing happened to keep us from being able to speak with confidence and respond to God's instruction. How do we respond? I want all of us to have a, we all have a choice. I want you to respond with the Spirit of God. Our response really can and should be in sync with what God's will is for our life. Yeah. Yeah. And when that takes place, God gets to work in your life and through your life. Yeah. Amen. Father, we love you today. We thank you that you're, you're sending out a message. <laughs> you're, you're sending out a, an instruction to us this week. God, we want to respond to your instruction. Some of those instructions might be for our own personal life. Some of those instructions might be for us to, to reach out and to touch someone else's life. Heavenly Father, we, we desire to respond. We, we don't want to react in the flesh, but we, we want to truly get past the natural expression of our reaction of what's inside, and we want to respond. We want to take the Spirit of God pause for a moment and look deeper and, and, and see what is required of the Spirit to accomplish the will of God. Your response, God, when you respond, you, you brought a full redemption to the problem. When Adam and Eve messed up, you responded. You covered, you killed a, an animal. You covered their mistake. You, you, you covered them. And then you said, now... Even before the foundation of the earth, I've already redeemed them. I've already paid the price for the mistake. God, your response, oh, thank you for not reacting every time we do stupid things. Thank you for responding and making a way for us to be redeemed and changed. We give you thanks today, Heavenly Father. We want to be like you. We want to help respond to this earth into the, the crying out of creation, that we would respond with your word and your spirit, that they would hear your truth and see you evident in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're in a point in your life right now where you're saying, boy, I've had some reactions, I need a little help with my rudder. <laughs> my rudder is stuck hard left and I've been going in circles. I've been turning the wheel, something's broke, I'm not going where I intended to go. If, if you have some reactions that seemingly are running your life instead of being able to respond, then I want to pray with you. Our team wants to minister to you. If you're online, chat in. If you're in the house, we want to pray with you. At this time, we're going to just stand and worship God and respond to Him. Let's Let's hear what he's saying for us this week and begin to just get in touch with God so that as we go out this week, we are fully able to do what he's called us to do. Amen.
pray that you claim these words that we're about to sing as your own and offer them to the Father today. Thank you. 
Choice one step, surrounding or rising.